Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are here with uh, a, a great uh, conversation between uh, important uh, filmmakers and also a film critic, and I myself as a curator, about two uh, very important films we are holding at the festival, which is uh, Pewter Salon by Hani Abu Asad, and also uh, by Mohammed Diab. Uh, we have also his newest film right now. Uh, we will talk to both of them to uh, discuss the several aspects of the film. So, Hani, uh, you have also uh, showcased uh, Paradise Now and Omar uh, in, our, in our film festival several years ago. Um, Mohammed, you also have uh, uh, been the author of Clash in Cairo 478, which are quite different films from the one you are exhibiting now, Amira. So uh, uh, I'm also introducing Jill, uh, who is preparing the catalog for the festival also. And he's also our film critic. Um, both Hani and uh, Mohammed, uh, your, both of your films somehow uh, are closely related to each other in several uh, features like, they, they both deal with victimhood, I would say, which is something which it, it comes uh, right away when when some when one watches both films. Uh, to, I would like to ask you first of all, and then Jill will follow up with some questions. Uh, if if the film uh, actually in 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 the, in the abstract sense it was meant to to portray victimhood. Uh, not only of, uh, as we can see on the film of Palestinian society being a very um, uh, let's see uh, with its, with its inner problems uh, regarding women, but also as victimhood of the, of the Israeli uh, uh, occupation. Uh, so in the sense, both films are a, a microcosm of what happens in uh, in Palestinian and uh, and also uh, the way they are manipulated uh, by by Israel. Would you like to comment a little bit on that, both of you? I think Hani should start because I, I want to hear what he's going to say and then say exactly what he's, he says. In general, what you are saying is right, but art is actually is not interested in in uh, let's say just the reality, but more or less how this reality will be portrayed as a, as a painting. <laughs> so mostly, um, yes, you know we are dealing with the real. Uh, a reality of uh, uh, living under occupation, oppression, and self-critique. Also, you you are um, you know you in order to fight your uh, oppressor, you have to be critical towards yourself to see how you can uh, make yourself stronger in order to fight better. But at the end, every movie is a painting. And why is that? Because we want actually to keep our, let's say, art in, in, in history. We want to, like in 100, like let's say, in maybe two years, in 10 years, in 100 years, the occupation will die. But you don't want uh, your film to die with the occupation. So you are making kind of... Uh, a film that will exceed its time and place. So this is more or less uh, what we do with the victimhood, make it universal uh, and also timeless that it will exceed its, its uh, let's say, place and time in order to keep it in history. As a witness, by the way, why in the history? As a witness of, of how human lived 
under extreme circumstances. You know how they dealt with their reality and how they fight, let's say, manipulation, aggression, uh, exploitation. So uh, it's it's art is a witness of like this is the way how you read history. The best way to read history is through art of that time, and this is why we are doing it. Yes, Muhammad. I yeah. No, Habibi, I was just saying that I, I, for me, I am not Palestinian, I'm Egyptian. So, but every Arab in the whole world um, holds the Palestinian cause in, in, in a very close place to his heart. I learned about Palestine exactly like Hani was saying, from Hani's movies, from other great Palestinian filmmakers. And ironically for me, because I, I did never went to Palestine, getting as close as possible was making a film about Palestine, making a film about their life. And I never felt that I understood uh, the, the Palestinian experience more than uh, the, the time that I was doing Amira. And uh, it really affected me on a human level. And I always thought if this is my experience, it could be the audience's experience watching my film, um, feeling the, the, those feelings. And definitely, the idea of victimhood is very, very sensitive. What I think what Annie was saying and, and, and what every one of us is, is, is afraid of is to make a propaganda film or to make the film that is not cinematic and it's just like saying something. I, our films are saying something, but they should stay uh, as a piece of art so it could live, for, live forever. But um, on a human level, um, I learned, and this is the best experiences in my life when I learned something through the journey that I've, that I've been through. Honey. Uh, in Paradise Now, you show uh, suicide bombers and and humor. You put in scene uh, show the, the the same about traitors and uh, uh, as in Huda Salon. Every film in these films, there are a critical uh, a critical an internal critics of Palestinian society and the reflection about the problem inside the Palestinian society. I ask for you, uh, how the Palestinians and his, uh, and the uh, Palestinian society uh, face it? How they uh, see this kind of critical uh, Points of points of view that you put in your movies. Now, first of all, it's true. I look. I always tend to look critical towards my own society, as I said, with the purpose of making it stronger. You know, the more, more critical towards yourself, the more you become stronger in order to fight um, injustice. Our, most of our people are frustrated because, you know, living under occupation is not an easy life. It makes you frustrated. And some of this frustration can, can't deal with criticism. Because, you know, like, uh, I, I have the luxury uh, to look critical towards my society, to myself. I have the luxury. I'm an artist. I have time to think. Most of people don't have this luxury. They are living really, they are fighting every day. They have a harsh time. So they don't uh, value uh, my critical uh, thinking. Although the more important, like let's say more influential people that can make a difference, they appreciate uh, the critical thinking because it makes them think better in how to fight and how to resist. So yes, I mean, we have dual uh, response. M mostly people don't like my, uh, 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 you know, my uh, point of views. They don't want to see uh, me showing um, our weaknesses or our flaws, thinking that this will uh, put us in a bad 
uh, spot in the world, but other, other part of our society truly appreciate what I'm doing because they know before, uh, it's not about like, everybody knows the Palestinians are oppressed. You don't need like, let's say to make a movie in order to condemn the occupier. The occupier is condemned with or without my movie, but you do a movie in order to make people think. And yes, they appreciate a lot what I do. Okay, it was uh, a little bit different in, for example, your film Idol. Yeah, the idol was uh, also, you know, life. Life is not just, uh, it's a love letter for, uh, all my movies are love letters from, for Palestine, but love letters is not just, you know, a uh, critical uh, way of thinking. You know, love letter is also sometimes enjoying what, what you are doing and showing the, you know, the beauty side of, uh, of fighting injustice. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mohammed, uh, we, we have seen in the recent Egyptian movies uh, that the Egyptian uh, filmmakers like you uh, reflect the, the Egyptian society, uh, it put in the films, uh, different points of the view, uh, uh, different uh, world, world views, and uh, different uh, social classes in conflict. Uh, liberal secularists against uh, conservative uh, religion, and uh, the, the problem with the uh, women oppression and like in clash that you put these groups in conflict under the repression under repression uh, of the state and uh, I ask for you do you agree with this uh, that Egyptian cinema in the last years, uh, has this, uh, do they, they has this characteristic, this, uh, uh, but in the different social groups in conflicts, like in Clash, and, and I will, I will, I would like that you talk about this, this, uh, this point. Um, I don't think anyone is doing anything intentional. It's just like a reflection of um, how Egypt is, like a lot of places, capitalism is dividing people by classes. Um, Egypt is more than one country in the same in the same area. We have the one percent who are rich, who are absolutely living in a bubble, uh, who don't who who you feel like they're living in the U.S. or a Western country, and you have the absolute poor people, which is the majority, who live in a different country. So if you're talking about anything social, usually you try to portray every point of view. Um, in Clash, which was a, a political film, um, everyone, it's not just, wasn't only social classes. It's social classes, um, it was social classes divided uh, politically. So um, you try as much as you can. I did, I did that with uh, Cairo 678 uh, and uh, Clash. I, it, it, it was the same thing, trying to see that problem or what's going on through everyone's point of view. Because as I told you, Egypt is not the same. It's not just one place. Um, but um, you, again, you don't do it intentionally, but it's just like true to the whatever the topic is. In the case of sexual harassment, we have three classes, middle class, upper class, lower class, and everyone is different. The same thing with the clash, the political world, and um, how everyone's seeing it and how, which side that they're taking it, uh, uh, taking its side. But it's very hard these days to make an, any Egyptian film without talking about class in, in at its core. Uh, yeah. you, you have now in the, in the uh, 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 Mostra, the festival, now in São Paulo, one one film called 
Shara uh, that reflects this kind of tensions uh, under. Uh, I don't know if you you if you know this this film uh, uh, called Shara. Sharab? Sharab. Sharab. No, I don't know anything about Sharab. it. It's, it's, uh, anyway, this uh, put this kind of tensions inside of a prison. In, it's not exactly uh, it's the, the, the director, director is uh, Egyptian, is uh, Samir Nasser. And the putting in this kind of uh, social and uh, tensions. Uh, in, in, in why you are talking about Amira now? Uh, why do you choose to to do a film in in Palestine? One film uh, that uh, treat about the uh, that talk about the situations the problems inside Palestine. Why this option to film in Palestine? Do you like this, the, yeah. the history or, or about, or do you? I'm, I'm definitely, I, I wanna write about what I know. So I definitely, my, my first instinct is to make something Egyptian. And I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear it well. You were talking about Sharaf. Yes, I know that film, I, I heard it wrong. And I know Samir he is a great filmmaker. Yeah. I would like to ask you, please, uh, both of you, if I may, um, uh, how was how were both of your films uh, received among your audiences? And uh, Mohammed, uh, especially yours, uh, the way that uh, what happened inside uh, among the Palestinian authorities that it was uh, censored somehow, or uh, even uh, it, um, having been um, taken away of. Uh, the Oscar uh, nomination by Jordan. What kind of pressure? Oh. Uh, let, let me tell you about this story from the beginning. I, as a filmmaker, I am drawn to a story. So I'm Egyptian, but at the same time, Palestine, as I told you, very close to our hearts. I, I read about that, the idea of smuggling sperm, and I felt this, there's great trauma there. Um, and I, I wanted to learn more about Palestine and get closer to it. And that's why, what drew me to that, that film. When the film uh, got out, um, it went to Venice, went to a lot of festivals, it went to Egypt, and all Palestinians were loving the film, saying great things about it. The Jordanians picked the film as their uh, pick for the Oscar, and they wrote why they picked it and how much it was a, a, a patriotic film. But one day uh, we discovered that um, the prisoners themselves didn't see it the same way we see it, and they thought um, the film wasn't clear enough that this is fiction, and uh, it made people think <coughs> that um, their their wives. It might make people doubt if their kids are their kids, <coughs> and for them this is something um, they thought it's completely uh, um, out of line, and they wrote about it in a very aggressive way, and that turned the tides against us. And um, at the end, we're making a film, but uh, people's lives matter. And we try to adjust to that and, and, and see what's going on. Like, and even uh, everyone is sympathizing with the people who are paying the price uh, on the ground, the Palestinian prisoners. So that's why everyone reacted in a way uh, that tried to accommodate for their uh, feelings. Uh, the Jordanians, they actually they believed in the film and they thought it's it's uh, they believed that it, the film is actually saying such a great message about Palestine, which until this day I think it is. But uh, again, if the prisoners themselves are feeling bad about it, then that's why they respected their feelings. We stopped the film from going to festivals for a while until we talked to them uh, to find a solution. Uh, but again, this is a very very specific case. For me, it's so clear. In, in my mind that uh, this this is a fiction and there the, it w there was only good intentions in making this film but um because the prisoners are in such a a, a special situation that's why everyone respected their feelings any uh, what about you uh, your film also uh, dealt with uh, inner uh, 
issues, uh, social issues, uh, women's oppression, uh, the way that uh, a male authority uh, holds uh, heed in among the society. How 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 do you how is it uh, dealt with? How is it received by by the, the in Palestinian uh, in the screenings? Or, and was it even uh, showcased in Israel? I, I don't think it was uh, showcased in in, uh, in occupied Palestine, and I'm not sure. I think it played a couple of times in Palestine before like things exploded. But I want to tell you that this kind of criticism wasn't just for Palestinians because Palestinians, just like most of the, all the Arab world, are the same. We are progressing. We're trying to get better. But we still have some uh, uh, problems in our society. And as, as Henny said, sometimes supporting someone is not just by saying you're great. Sometimes by saying, okay, this is what's left to make you a better person. This is... And it's it's a question about me myself. Uh, I'm progressing as a human being every single day. So what 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 went through uh, Amira and her family twenty years ago, I might have acted the same. I'm, I'm just telling you, as 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 a society, as human beings, as an artist, every day you grow up and you try to learn. Um, so it, this wasn't specifically for Palestinians. I would say if it's in Egypt, the same thing. Uh, if if if, if um, if this situation happened in Egypt, it wouldn't have been different the way people were reacting. So if you saw it as criticism, a lot of people told me, you know what? If it's in our society, we would have reacted even more or more aggressive. And that's actually, you're holding a mirror in front of everyone. So everyone is is is, is thinking, how would we react? And is this way of reacting right or wrong? Because a lot of people even would, would, would be surprised that you're saying that the way the males are acted in that film that they are uh, uh, oppressors, because actually they were soft compared to a lot of Arabs. I'm not talking again about uh, Palestinians in, in specificity. And Hani, uh, are you are the producer, one of the producers of the Amira? What do you think about this uh, controversy? Well, I have to say that lately I feel everywhere, not just in the Arab world, that people are uh, less tolerant towards um, uh, other thoughts. So even in the United States where, or the West, where uh, 20 years ago, it was a very normal discussion about different views and now became very aggressive discussion and even canceling the other side. So we are living under the same circumstances worldwide that uh, if you come up with a different point of view in order to open the discussion, you will be canceled and you will be like aggressively attacked. It happens to us, yes. Uh, it's very painful, I have to say. It's very, very painful, not just... And I feel like... Uh, our society is changing. I, if I did as Muhammad said, if we did this movie 20 years ago, no one, mostly will be appreciated. But now, let's say the frustrated voices are very loud, also because of social media and because of politics. Politics are, in general, uh, politicians are supporting identity politics in order to let us fight together rather than fighting the authority. So it's also, you know, uh, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a policy uh, from the authorities all over the world that create, uh, they are pushing us to fight about ideas rather than to unite uh, uh, in order to fight, to fight the authorities. So yes, I, it's painful. I have to say, I'm not happy with uh, with what 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 we uh, in this time we are living in. Regarding yeah. Huda Salon as well, it it was uh... yeah. yeah. Huda Salon went also through uh, the same, let's say, cancel uh, uh, attacks. Uh, it's combined. I have to say, it's combined. Like, don't forget, at the end of the end. The, the media and social media 
is controlled by big brothers. You know, it's a fact. It's not a conspiracy. It's not, uh, uh, you know, they are controlling. They are controlling the discourse. They are controlling the media. They need to start like just, um, you know, they need to have frustrated people inside them. And you will have this fight in social media. So first of all, you have the authorities that inflaming, uh, let's say, anger. You have frustrated people that will react to this, uh, to this inflaming. You have, you know, hatred people. You have bad people all over the world, and they will, they just want to be, you know, they 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 promote negativity because. Uh, they don't want to look to themselves as a failures, and they are failures. They are doing nothing. So instead of looking to themselves as failures, they are attacking us. So you have like a combination between authorities who are behind the scenes inflaming the frustration. You have frustrated people. You have hatred people. And you have jealous people. And they all come together to attack you. And this is a trend, not just in Palestine, all over. It's how I see this happening. And like, look, look what they are doing to, um, you know, Dave Chappelle, for example, in the United States. It's, it's incredible. Uh, you know, it's, it's incredible what's going on. Uh, anyhow, it's painful, I have to say. I, I don't like this, what's going on. How did you get to know? Uh each other i mean as a you were the the producer of uh, amira uh, how, how was the, the conviviality between both of you during well I, I i the first time i heard of uh muhammad yab was when i saw a movie he wrote and i felt it was it was the al jazeera and i felt the writer the movie itself was Let's say, okay, <laughs> I hope uh, Sharif Arafa won't, <laughs> won't. But, but the writing was excellent. I felt like the writing was great. So later I also get to know his uh, movies, like uh, Six, Seven, Eight, and, uh, and, and I never met him before, but when we met uh, in Cairo by accident or by common friend who put us together, Mohammed Hefzi, uh, always I felt like we should, yes, we should uh, work together because I believe in like good art movement is collaborative. Like let's say uh, there is a big question, why the 70s produced a lot of good movies that stayed in history? Because all the directors were coming together and discussing and working and helping each other. So I want to follow this example of collaborating and, and working together. So when Muhammad came with this idea and, and I, uh, I was with my wife uh, uh, having dinner with Muhammad and he said, I read this and I want to do something about it. We felt like immediately, yes, please, let's do it together. And this is how it started. Muhammad, uh, I would like to know uh, why do you choose the like in mainly uh, the main character of the Amira, uh, the teenager uh, Amira, and, and not the don't the 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 mother, uh, her mother. Why the point the view of uh, a teenage a teenage girl? Oh, a young girl, a very young girl. The moment I heard, I, I, I read about that line, the idea of people smuggling their sperm, me and my wife, Annie, and, and Amira, uh, Dieb, his wife, we, we, we kept playing ping pong with the idea. Um, and it felt, my final choice was, I feel like this should be a mystery. And um, what... I kept asking myself, a girl who was born this way, what kind of life uh, she, would she lead? Definitely the mom too. By the way, I, I don't consider it's only Amira. It's her mom. The mom's story is, is fantastic. The father's story is fantastic too. And and um, like yeah. the real one of the real heroes of the story is the mother. How how she's 
the sacrifice that she's doing. Uh, ironically, the, the most character that I identified with was the father, someone who loves so much, but in the same time, he is, his hands are tied. I felt as a father, I wanted to cry for him. He can't do anything. And how can be a hero from the inside? But uh, you keep playing ping pong with every idea until you feel, okay, this is the direction of the story. You don't think, in my, in my experience, I don't think, okay, I want to see the story through the girl's point of view. No, no, no. You try to uh, uh, eliminate all the bad ideas, all the bad suggestions, and the best, and the best one keeps, uh, stays. So the best one was to see the world through this girl's eyes. So she questions the mother. The mother is a suspect. Everyone is a suspect. And she's the only innocent person who can see the world this way. Uh, so that's why we saw it through her eyes. But um, I, I love her innocence. Um, it's it, it, Every human being on earth has an opinion about Palestine and Israel. When you see it through an innocent person's point of view, um, I think it's hard for you to take sides or you ha sometimes you have to cancel your preconceived notions. It was very important to find that girl, that actress that gives you this innocence um, that helps you see the story without any preconceived notions. Well, I would, would like that you talking about the, 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 the process of the shootings, the choice of the cast, the about the actress it was uh, she's very good and uh, the the creative process during the shooting something changing uh, do we do, do have uh do we work with uh, uh a script uh, or open script uh, the part uh, the participation of the uh, actors and the actress for, for me, it all starts with a script that I worked work on for a long while. And after that, you bring in the actors and everyone adds something, their, their character's best lawyers. Then we go shoot it. it was, I, I cheated or I took everything that Henny does in his great films, great Palestinian films, every, all the crew that he has. Um, so I got the best people. Um, and the best thing about Palestine, there's no uh, um, uh, star system. So it's very easy to get the best stars to do like a small role. Or So when you're making a film, it, you can get the best people. I think I got an all-star cast. Um, uh, I mean, uh, just the main girl was maybe the only one who wasn't known and we had to find her. And um, it was a process for a couple of months until we found her. The moment she ad auditioned, I knew that she's the one. Um, and then we shoot and definitely there is room for uh, improvisation just a little bit just to fix the scene to make sure the scene is working uh, but usually after you have a script you you in, 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 in my style you try to stick to it as much as possible Honey uh, how about to film in, uh, in, in Palestine uh, this is it's difficult to film in Palestine about all the barriers from the occupation. Uh, that's the case question. What's the mainly the main difficult and the major pleasures to to shoot in Palestine? I don't know. You shoot in West Bank or in uh, or or other region for me. In Palestine or Nazareth or other cities? I shot Huda Salon uh, partly in Nazareth in the occupied Palestine of 48 and partly in Bethlehem, uh, occupied Palestine from 67, which is called the West Bank. Uh, it's both like 20, uh, like 50% here, 50% there. And I choose to do that. Uh, because uh, the locations, I, uh, I had in the film two major locations, the one under the ground and the one above the ground. So I, I found a great place in Nazareth under the ground, and I found a great place above the ground in Bethlehem. Uh, accidentally, they're both biblical cities, Nazareth and Bethlehem. 
It's very accidental. But I like the idea, accident, you know, in art, nothing is accidental at the end. It's all about uh, how to put together a painting or, a, you know, a mosaic that will make sense. And um, it's, yes, it's difficult in both cities, but as a director, the major job in, uh, in, in you as a director is to switch the negativity to positivity. I, I believe that, you know, uh, always you will have obstacles, even outside of Palestine. All the time as a director, you will face obstacles. So a good director, he will use the obstacles in, in his favor, exactly like a sailing boat. You know, a, a good sailing, a good sailor, when the wind is coming towards you and you are uh, uh, and you are sailing against the wind, you know how to maneuver your sailing in order to use the wind in your favor. So this is exactly how a director do in the movie. Always use, it's, it, can, it can be a very uh, advantage to the result of the movie. It's not easy, like for on the personal level, yes, I prefer to shoot a Hollywood movie where there is no obstacles. I really enjoy being a director in a Hollywood movie. If you let me choose, I will choose a very easy, uh, uh, the, the, the easy way. And I would like to, you know, not to have obstacles. But for the, res for, for the movie itself, I think when you have obstacles, the movie becomes better. Uh, honey, uh, regarding uh, the uh, Arab-Israeli community, uh, do you uh, view many differences, uh, uh, especially with um, women's issues uh, compared to the people living in the West Bank? Because we, ha we have uh, uh, the information always that uh, it, it is uh, exposed to the Western uh, values more than uh, the Middle Eastern ones. So, in this sense, uh, someone can uh, be mistaken uh, and uh, and and regard it with prejudice. You know, the way, for example, women uh, are viewed, uh, like uh, like you well uh, show uh, showed in in your film. I believe that the differences in social class rather than in territories, uh, it's, well, and this is not just in Palestine, let's say a middle class in uh, Egypt is having almost the same values as a middle class in Palestine, but the, let's say the poor class, the difference between the poor class in Palestine and the middle class in Palestine is bigger than the difference between the middle class of Palestine and the middle class of Egypt. So the differences are in the class. Uh, let's say middle class are more westernized all over the world, not just in Palestine, which is not, it's not, um, I'm not like I, anyhow, it's not always a good thing, by the way. But this is a complete different discussion. Yes, uh, because uh, let's say Palestinian under the uh, under the forty eight occupation, which now called Israel, uh, mm -hmm. they have a better let's say income, so mm -hmm. they belong to a different class. Mostly, let's say yes, and they react differently to woman issue. Uh, not because they are from different territories, just because they have a a better income, and why better income makes you uh, uh, send your uh, uh, daughters and your sons to universities and to, you know, education, and they get almost the same education, so be they become, let's say, liberal, westernized, call it what you want to call it. So yes, the difference is not because uh, we are uh, in a different territory, it just 
uh, it happens to be that the middle class is in in uh, in Palestine 48 is bigger than the middle class in uh, the West Bank, but actually the poor class in uh, in uh, among uh, Palestinian under the Israeli uh, 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 occupation of 48, uh, they are all, they react identical to the how Palestinians in the West Bank from the poor class will react. So, so it's important to note well that it it has no relation to do also with religious uh, values uh, in the same way. No, also uh, Christians from a poor class in Palestine, they will react almost identical to Muslims from the same class. But it happens to be that Christians in our society are more middle class than poor class. So they react Always, like the middle class will react differently because they are exposed to different uh, education. Very interesting. And uh, uh, Muhammad, uh, and what? Uh, how the, the the situation in in Egypt right now? Uh, we know. There is in the Egypt a strong censorship, and uh, how about to shoot in in, in, in Egypt now? Uh, talk about the the, 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 the actual uh, situation. Well, and um, we always try to learn how to work around censorship, but lately I think what Henny was talking about is actually this the social media. And the public media and the public censorship became the hardest hurdle that we face. Right now, every single producer I know is so scared of a back, uh, uh, backlash. We had, in the past six months, four movies, I, ironically produced by the same guy, uh, Muhammad Hebzi, one of our, the, the, the best uh, producers in the Egypt and the Middle East. And the four of them made quite, uh, 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 they were very problematic for him. Uh, Hoda Salon, Amira, Ashab uh, Allah it's a film uh, that is an, an, an Italian film on Netflix that uh, uh, got made into Egypt and they didn't like it because of uh, an obscene scene. Uh, another film called Rish because they saw it shows poverty. So uh, you don't know what to do as a producer or as someone making a film. Everywhere you go, if you are doing what you're supposed to do, which is changing the status quo, it means you're going into danger. And the danger now is not censorship. The danger is uh, uh, public censorship. Because uh, uh, after getting the censorships okay, you, you discover that the, the public themselves, if they attack the movie, I want to tell you something. Right now, Amira, I cannot even, the, the, the TV channel that bought it, the cinemas that bought it, cannot dare to air it because of the public, not because of the censorship. That's for example. So right now what we're facing worse, way, way worse than censorship is the public censorship. It's something painful, especially if someone like Annie, someone like me, it, especially in the films that you pick and you try to make something not commercial and you sacrifice part of your life, you sacrifice part of your income, you do something that you feel like you're trying to help your country and then you see this sometimes a, a, a huge backlash because someone misunderstood you or disagreed with your point of view or whatever. Uh, it's very, very harsh these days. And I, I agree with the, Henny's um, uh, when he analyzed it, the reason why it's, it's becoming bigger and bigger. Uh, Mohammed, uh, with regards to the, the last part of your film, it's also, uh, I wouldn't like to be a spoiler, but it's also quite... Uh, uh, Heartbreaking you now to to see what happens in the end and the sacrifice which uh, the main character goes through. Um, could you make a parallel as well with uh, another film? I would say uh, with other films in the the uh, the Arab film industry, the independent ones, uh, regarding the the, the, the the sacrifice of oneself to to. Uh, to deal with it, with your personal honor and with your what your family might think. 
we try to change that. By the way, we we shot an ending. Then we thought it's not the perfect one. We wrote 13 endings. This was the one that most of us thought this is the best one. But uh, I didn't want her to sacrifice. She wanted to come back to Palestine and live her life. But she was forced um, to flee her life. And then the, what happened, happened. But I mean, I think a lot of Palestinians, um, no one wants to choose conflict. Everyone wants to live a normal life. And that's what you see. Uh, that's what I learned from working with a lot of Palestinians. Everyone just want to live in peace, have a family, and just like be part of the a normal society. And I think Amira is no different. Um, she just wanted to, to. At the end, she dropped the gun. She she tried to be a normal person. Uh, that was the insinuation, but uh, she wasn't forced. She was like stuck. She doesn't know where to go or anything. She was forced. Uh, uh, for, for that faith. And I think a lot of Palestinians uh, uh, face the same thing. No one would choose, like no one, I think everyone, if you ask them to live a normal life or be forced to fight for your life, everyone would choose to be, uh, 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 to live a normal life. And that's what, in a way, that's what their people are fighting for. Just a normal life, a, a normal life and a future for their kids. And honey, uh, with regards to, to certain parts of your film, how, uh, it's, very interesting in the way that you chose it to be a thriller and how you managed to 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 maintain the level of uh, of fear of panicking uh, especially the uh, ream i mean the way that they they have the, the nudity even uh, how how brave of you to 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 exhibit that no uh, how how did that uh, that come into your mind during the process of filmmaking? Uh, first of all, I really would like to uh, to make movies that witness our time, be a witness uh, to our time. I, if I succeed, I don't know. My history will tell. But I really like to know what I'm doing a movie that uh, this movie will be also in hundred years from now will be working. So nudity is, is I, I decide to shoot it in full, um, in full screen because it's a, it's, let's say, if confronting audience, uh, the, the, exa the, the crime of, of how you, how a woman will be, let's say, uh, exposed or raped, let's say, but in a, in a, a in a, a Exploit, exploited way, like how she will be exploited and her, her nudity will be exploited. So this is a very uh, uncomfortable scene. And yes, as a witness, uh, I want people to uh, to see that in a very uncomfortable way and to see that nudity in general in movies are uh, meant to, uh, to create erotics, but nudity can be also uh, disgusting and devastating. So I, I, as a as a witness, I felt like I should uh, film that um, as blunt as possible uh, to, um, to, uh, to 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 confront the audience with the horrible uh, uh, exploitation of vulnerable women in Palestine by the Israeli secret service. And, and that even happened. It's it's uh, something based on uh, real facts that were proven in the 80s, no? As this sort of recruitment in beauty salons. No? Yes, and it's still happening, unfortunately. And it's happened in what way? But I have to say, with all the attacks that being done to the movie, uh, and led, by the way, by, I believe, by the Israeli Secret Service, uh, still, I am happy with the, with the movie because a lot of women, when they saw the movie, they realized, uh, let's say, uh, and this is also one si why we do movies, you know, to let people think about difficult situation before they happened. And a lot of women, um, uh, I uh, get to think after watching the movies, and one of the women called me and said, thank you for making this movie. I let my daughters watch it 
And after they watch it, I told them, if this will happen once to you, don't be afraid, come to me. And, and I felt like it's enough. I, I, even though I will be attacked from others, it's enough this reaction that some woman uh, realizes that what to do in the future and to uh, warn their daughters in case this happened to you, uh, not to be uh, vulnerable and not to uh, be exposed to extortion and to come to your beloved one and tell them what happens and they will stand by you and they will support you. Is there something uh, try to to uh, apply to censor the censorship or uh, boycott uh, from from Israel or from this film or, or, or other films that you that you did? Uh, but uh, nowadays, um, uh, the Israel is, is uh, neglecting me totally. I think all the, I mean, the media, the, they are just publishing things negative about me and they don't publish anything that uh, is positive, I think. And, and they try to neglect me because I've, I think uh, for them it's better uh, not to... Uh, you know, just ignore me, I think. If they ignore me, this is their best strategy now because they know if they will open a discussion with me that um, I can easily win. And this is why they uh, they decide to ignore me. So that I'm, I'm now, I don't exist in their, <laughs> let's say. Yes. It's not a censorship. It's just, you know, uh, by the way, this igno ignoring or putting pe important people in the margins, it's happening everywhere. I mean, now nowadays, like the Kardashian, Kardashian sisters are uh, world news, but let's say uh, a thinker like Chris Hedges, it's in the margins. You know, it's, it's, it's incredible. I think most people do, don't even know who's Chris Hedges. Uh, but they know the Kardashian. And Chris Hedges is one of them. I think he's one of the most important writers of, of our time now. And just few few people uh, knows him. Uh, uh, 70 years ago, Arthur Miller will be a main news, yes? Everybody, everybody will know Arthur Miller. And now, no, writers are pushed to the margins and just silly people are in the in the mainstream media and it's a it's a policy it's not just by accident the same is israelis do with us they um, ignore their uh, even their own intellectuals and they are like putting them in the margins and just you know expose silly and and stupid people to become the model of the of the society as, as I know, in the paradise now, uh, Israel tried to boycott that uh, so uh, Palestine don't exist, don't, don't, they uh, can't to receive a uh, award because there's no Palestine or something like like that. Yes, and they lost because the uh, uh, the more you try to censor, the more interest people will get to watch your movies. So they realized, uh, and by the way, the same with Amira and Huda Salon. Uh, when, when people attack these, move, uh, these films, these films became more famous than ever. And a lot of people watch them because they, you know, they heard about them. So the Israelis are a little bit uh, more, more, let's say, they realize this is not a good way to censor. Ignoring is better. Definitely. Like it happened uh, in Israel with their own intellectuals uh, and Jewish intellectuals like uh, Noam Chomsky no? Which, and uh, Ilan Pape. No? You can see. Yeah, yeah. But also filmmakers, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the director who did Foxtrot. 
really, I think it's a, a, a good movie for Sionism. Uh, but, you know, they've, you know, because he's critical towards their own society, they marginalize him. Uh, it's very sad, actually, to see how the world is, is treating their own intellectuals. That's quite amazing for uh, those who name themselves the uh, important democracies, which are maybe sometimes the only democracy in the Middle East. No? Well, I, I have doubts about democracy in the world, uh, let alone democracy in Israel. But it's a different discussion. Let's not open it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, definitely. To, to us, the Israel is not a democracy. No, I think the whole think world is. Oh, it's a fake. It's a really fake. There is yes, no democracy. Of course, we democracy. agree with this. It's just a you know a facade, and they are playing with us. If if there was a democracy, they won't do what what they are doing now, all over. Also in social issues, you know, uh, economical issues environmental issues, weapons, uh, you know, like, can, can somebody tell me where is the democracy when the United States spent uh, 10 times more on developing weapons rather in, on uh, healthcare? Somebody can explain to me the, where is the democracy here? But anyhow, I, uh, democracy is like, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a play, it's a facade, it's a Shakespearean play that led some people believe in it and uh, I don't, I believe in real democracy, but not in this uh, current fake democracy. Oh, of course. Uh, uh, Mohammed, Mohammed Zen? We lost him. Yeah. Well, oh, honey, it was a very pleasant uh, conversation. It's a pleasure to, to, to know you, to talk with you. I, uh, we are here uh, in Brazil or uh, the, the festival, the institute that promotes the festival has a very tight link with the uh, Palestinian uh, cause with the Palestinians. And uh, I'm very happy to talk with you. Thank you just for thank this you opportunity. Uh, yeah, thank you, Jill. Gabriela, uh, Max, I really, uh, you know, I really enjoy talking to you and always good to, you know, to, uh, to exchange ideas uh, from a different part of the world and to feel like Brazil is so far uh, in the distance, but very close in the, in the intellectual side. So thank you for having this discussion and uh, making Brazil close to me. Thank you, honey. You are most welcome. And we hope to have the opportunity to be with you in future editions of the Arab Film Festival. I hope so. I truly hope so. Wahlan sahla fil Brazil. Al Brazil. Shukran, shukran, shukran. Shukran. Thank you very much for Hani and uh, Muhammad. And uh, I respect, I have sure that your uh, productions, your, our, well, their uh, films will be very useful in, in Brazil. And you were very welcome here. Thank uh, you very much, everyone, okay. for listening to us. Uh, we hope you had a joyful afternoon, and and we hope to see you in future festivals. Unfortunately, uh, Mohammed had to leave before. Thank you.